Jennifer Lahan with Lahan Home Team and PRB here with the first real estate market update for 2022. Let's get started. We're going to start with a quote by Bill McBride. You know we've used him quite a few times with our updates. He says, it is possible that rising mortgage rates will slow the housing market or the Fed might raise rates sooner than expected due to the recent pick up in inflation. But I believe one thing is certain, inventory will tell the tale. So I know there's been concerns about what's going to happen with the interest rates. What about inflation? And a lot of these we can't always quite predict, but we can make conjectures on that. But what's the bad news? Well, listings are still at a record low. That is the bad news when it comes to the real estate market. Let's just look at this map real quick. You can kind of see here we're comparing December of 2020 to December of 2021, looking at housing inventory. And you can see in most states, we are lower than we were in December of 2020. So if you look at Florida, we're at negative 48.1% when we're looking year over year. Now, Idaho, hey, you guys are doing great over there. So if the other states could start following with that, we'd be great. What about buyer activity? What's going on here? Well, this is showing time. We've done this one before. This shows you how many showings there have been uh, on the monthly index. And you can kind of see we hit a low point over here in November of 2020. This, hill, this whole half side is 2020. Over here on the right side is your 2021. We actually had more showings last year than we did in 2020. So showings are still strong, but looking here at November of 2021, we did start to see a decrease in the showing. And obviously you can see here in the spring was the best time, but showings still crush pre-pandemic numbers. Pre-pandemic, yes. Look at 2019, so 17, 18, and 19. These were the pre-pandemic years. Now look at the showing times for 2020 and then 2021. Buyer market is still strong. All right, let's look at another quote by Michael Lane. Showings traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demand remains strong. The fact that every region showed a year over year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred. It speaks to their desire to keep searching for their next home. Let's look at pending sales. They are actually higher as well than the pre-pandemic numbers. So again, in the gray, you've got the pre-pandemic years. These were our real estate years. Then 2020, 2021, these were still higher pending sales. So yeah, we had lower inventory, but yet we were still strong with buyers and they are still finding homes. It might take a while, I should say, but they're finding something. What about home equity? Home equity is still growing. You can look at this map that just kind of shows you. So you've got your average equity gain. Here in Florida, we've got a 64,000 average equity gain. Look at California, 119,000. Now you do have some states that we just don't have enough uh, sufficient data with, but overall we've seen a growth across the country. The national average is 56,700. Frank Martel says that not only have equity gains helped homeowners more seamlessly transition out of forbearance and avoid a distressed sale, but they've also enabled many to continue building their wealth. Another quote here says U.S. households own $36.8 trillion in owner-occupied real estate, $11.5 trillion in debt, and the remaining $25 trillion in equity. In inflated adjusted terms, Homeowners had an average of 294,000 in equity in quarter three of 2021, which is a historic high. Now, what's to expect in the 2022 housing market, right? That's the question. Well, here's some good news. Forbearances actually fall below 1 million. If you look here, this is the monthly number of loans in active forbearance in millions. So May of 2020, we actually had 4.76. Let's go now to December of 2021, so last month. This was a low. We're looking at 0.89. 
So we've seen a good amount of loans, uh, these, sorry, forbearances finally fall below even just 1 million. We may see a little bit of an uptick in foreclosure rates in 2022. Just an uptick though, from an extraordinarily low level, we're not expected to see a big increase. We expect delinquency rates overall on home mortgages to actually continue to remain quite, quite low. So this is the senior leader of research at CoreLogic, and we do use CoreLogic a lot. Has home price acceleration peaked? Now that's the question. Has it peaked or has it plateaued? So let's look here at this map. This is from, we've got three different lines. So we've got the FHFA, we've got CoreLogic, and then we've got S&P Case Schiller. And you can look to see the growth. This is the percent year over year monthly price increase in 2021. So we're starting back in January and you can kind of see how the prices increase and we did see that peak. And it almost looks like we hit a plateau, not depreciation, but more of a plateau. What are the home price forecasts for 2022? Well, you've got a bunch of different forecasts. We always notice that we see quite a difference between, I mean, if you look at Fannie Mae, 7.4% and then NAR, 2.8%. But if we look at the average of all the forecasts, we're looking at about 5.2%. Now, home prices appreciation went quite considerably 2021 or 2020 and 2021. So we're looking at possibly a slowdown, not a decline in prices. So we have to make sure that we understand that. We don't expect any type of depreciation, but just a slowdown in appreciation. So overall, this is what McClare Bolton Smith is saying from CoreLogic. So overall, I do think that 2022 will be another strong year for housing albeit a little bit higher mortgage rates, and we do think home sales will continue to rise and actually reach a 16-year high in 2022. Now let's talk about home sales. Again, average days on the market, not much has changed. I think uh, most of last year it was 17 days. Now we're at 18 days, so not a huge change. It just depends on the state, but overall you can see most of the states are pretty consistent. What about new home sales? New home sales have done very well, and we, I've been talking about this every month, but you can kind of see where the majority of home sales, new home sales are. They're between the three to 399, but it, ben, it depends where you live. I think when we started over here in Orlando, this was probably a good price range, but now we're hitting four to 499, I would say, in the Orlando area. Total home sales. This is not just new homes, this is total homes. So we're looking at here, if you notice, you've got kind of this lighter gray, that would be 2021. You can see kind of a difference here. So in November, we actually had more sales in 2021 than we did in 2020. Still don't have the data yet for December, so maybe we'll have that for you next month. Home prices. Here is a year over year sales price of existing homes. Now in the US, we're talking about about 13.9%. Where has the biggest one right now increased what we've seen? The South at 18.4%. But if you look, if you've been watching the monthly market real estate updates, you'll notice it's kind of changed each month when we look at that. And what about a change in home prices? Again, this is year over year. If we're starting in June of 2012. And you can kind of see the graph, how we've leveled out for a while. So here's our 16, 2017, 2018. We had a slight dip between 19 and 20. And then you can see the graph literally almost like grow exponentially through 2021. And again, we've talked about how that's all just about supply and demand. Here's the year-over-year -year percent change in price. So current is 18.1%. The forecast is 2.8%. So again, it is forecast that eventually, hopefully in the next year or two, we will see a change or a slowdown in appreciation. Now let's go to housing inventory. Here's your seller traffic index. 
So you've got this map. Now, I'm not seeing one state that is very strong with seller traffic. However, we are starting to see some stable, right? Stabilization, which is always good to see. Florida's still weak, and I can say that for sure over here in the Orlando area. We still need more inventory. So that's what we're still waiting on. Month's inventory of homes for sale. So if you look at here, you can see, again, we've had some good ones for the summer, but we've seen a decline since that. And this is probably typical. You do send, tend to see more home sales spring and summer, but we're still hurting for more inventory. But new home monthly inventory, I keep saying they have been doing very well. In fact, I can tell you, Brent and I had a client that we were recently looking, helping them find a retirement home. Nothing, there was not a much in resale. So we took them to some new home communities and sure enough, they found a home that they loved. So they are now building their retirement home. And so that might be an option that you want to consider. What about buyer demand? We always talk about buyer demand. Now we've seen an impressive year over year demand seen across the US as holiday home showing traffic heats up. So if we look again at year over year increase in showing activity, Michael Lane says that showings traditionally, traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demand remains strong. The fact that every region showed a year over year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred by the approaching holidays. It speaks to their desire to keep searching for their next home. And again, you can see, we haven't, there's no decline here. We're not in the red when it comes to the buyer demand. What about your tired traffic index? So if we look at the map, now notice we're not seeing any states right now that are very strong, but we do see several states that are strong. And we have, of course, Idaho over there. There we go. We're in kind of the weak category, very weak. But then we saw that they had more inventory there as well. Mortgage rates. We always have to talk about mortgage rates. Here are the projections. Now, we've been talking about this. They keep projecting that they're going to increase, but we've seen a bit of a change with what they're projecting. If you look now in the sec uh, first quarter, about 3.3%. And actually, even if you've been if you've been studying the mortgage rates or even over the last week or two, they've been a little volatile. So we've seen them kind of going up and down. We're projecting for the fourth quarter 3.7%, but this will keep changing. Projections uh, are never set in stone, I will say that. Here we're looking at just a history of the mortgage rates. You can see in 2018, we did kind of hit a peak close to 5%. Then we saw a strong drop over the last couple of years, but notice that we're just, we have not seen a drop, not too much. So we're seeing kind of a steady increase going on right now. The projection is that it will continue to increase. If you look here, again, at just another way to look at it, here are your interest rates. This starts, and you probably cannot see this on the video, but it starts back here in 2018. And then we work our way through 2021 to 2022. And then these would be the projections for 2022, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. What about average FICO scores? Those are important because you'd want to have an idea of what you need. And this is just showing you over the last several months what the average FICO scores are. And if you notice in the last, from July, August, and September, they were actually lower than they were at the beginning of 2021. Average FICO score uh, for closed purchase loans. So these are loans, again, that have already closed. And you can kind of see what the average FICO score has been depending on the loan type. What about average back end DTI for closed purchase loans? So you can kind of see all loans, about 36. But if you look at FHA, about 43. So these are uh, how long it's averaged to take to close a loan. Conventional is always typically quicker than your FHA and your VA. All right, that leaves us to our Orlando update. Now let's talk about Orlando sales. So this now, I love this graph because we're getting a picture of the entire 2020 and 2021. Notice the orange, that was 2021. So 2020 was not as strong as last year. So yes, we had a decline in sales. I, I'm sorry, decline in inventory, but sales were still stronger last year than they were for 2021. And look at December, that was stronger than the year before. 
All right, so now let's look at Orlando average sale price. Notice all of 2021 far exceeded the average sale price for 2020. Look at December. If you remember the last couple of market updates, I thought June was going to be our peak because at the time it was. But if you look at the average sale price for December, it actually exceeded the average sale price for June. So it turns out December was our peak for 2021 with average sale price. So interesting to see how 2022 is going to proceed. All right, so again, we have our winter buyer and seller guides. If you're interested, just send us an email or give us a call, or you can always visit our website at lahanhometeam.com. If you have any questions about the Orlando area or its real estate market, feel free to call us at that number, or again, visit our website at lahanhometeam.com. Enjoying our videos? Please like and subscribe to our channel.